Hi. How was the walk? It was nice, thank you. Yeah. How many cars did you guys come in? I'm curious. Just one? Oh, okay. Oh, there's three. I had a park kind of close to the garbage thing because the parking was so crazy today. And it looks like at least two people are leaving, so I might. Yeah, well, we're. I might go move my car in a little we're bit. With them, so we're definitely leaving. Oh, crud. Okay. Were you worried about the garbage? You're there? Actually, I was here yesterday and they hauled the garbage out, so I'm thinking they probably don't come every day. Right, they don't. So I think I'm probably safe, but yeah. if a spot opened up, I'd jump on it. Yeah, I've parked there before. Oh, you have you? Yeah. Near oh, okay. That. Oh, okay. Hmm. How are you doing a survey or what? I'm doing interviews. Oh. I'm doing something called street epistemology, uh -huh. and I'm doing the street version of it. It's uh, normally these things just uh, somebody makes a claim, and then I ask questions or people ask questions to gently inspect the claim that's being made. Mm -hmm. I initiate talks and uh, I ask the person to pick a belief they think is true. They usually pick karma or their political view. I got you. Or they think a god is real. They've seen a ghost. <laughs> I've been exploring phobias, prejudices, and anxieties lately. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of interesting. And I time, I time it for five minutes too so I'm not holding people up. I got you. And I like to record it and mm -hmm. share it with people. Oh, okay. Do you, were you with those guys? No, no. Oh, okay. I, I think I've seen you here before. I, I generally come once a day. Sometimes I come twice. Uh, you come twice a day sometimes, huh? Yeah. Good yeah. for you, man. Uh, yeah, I, I, when, I'm 70. And when you get 70, all of a sudden you have health issues that you didn't have before, you know? I'm 47 and I, I, I'm already there, I feel, I feel uh -huh. like. But um, I guess I'd rather feel sore and in pain from having exercised rather than sore and in pain from just laying around right yeah well good for you you come out here a lot you must uh you must see mary and her husband all the time the old lady mm -hmm. yeah the old gentleman yeah oh yeah <laughs> they're here all the time oh uh, yeah they're great they, they really are great she brings me cookies now because I've, <laughs> I've, I've been out here so much <laughs> it's funny would you be interested in doing a short little interview Go ahead. okay are you okay if i record it don't mind beautiful i have a second camera that i want to put on me if that's all right no i don't mind okay I really appreciate you stopping. Well, I was. My wife said to me, "She said, well, I think he's doing surveys." And <laughs> oh, you come here with, with your wife too? Yeah. Is she, she on the trail now? No, no, no. She's not here today. Mm. Uh, uh, we have a bunch of appointments, and uh, she likes to fix dinner before she goes and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Very yeah. nice. So you guys had seen me be here before, kind of wondering what I was. Yeah, up to. Yeah, I just. That's why I stopped. And I appreciate you stopping. No. So when when the belief that's being picked, uh, what is your first name by the way? Keith. I'm Anthony. Okay, Anthony. Yep. Very nice to meet you. When the belief that we examine is very tied to who you are, it makes for a more interesting interview. But we can honestly talk about pretty much any claim. So if there's some belief that you have that you're very passionate about, and you would be a completely different person if you didn't hold the belief. And it's also something that, that you're very confident is true. Right. So the those are sort of the parameters. Okay. <laughs> and what do you think? What do you what do you want to chat about? Let's see here. I uh voter ID. Voter ID. Mmm. Is that is that a topic that's been discussed? I don't think I've ever spoken to anybody about that. And what is your claim about voter ID? Well, I believe that on voter ID, if you don't I believe that there are people that vote fraudulently mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay and and I can't understand why a one particular party okay thinks that it's not a good idea and another particular party think, thinks that it has it, it there it needs to be a, an ID furnished I got you okay I, if I understand right your position is that voter fraud is real yes and the way to resolve the issue is to um, uh, issue <laughs> resolve the issue is to issue voter IDs or to provide some kind of identification that validates who you are mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. either driver's license or our passport or 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 something that has a picture on it okay okay, okay. and uh, mm. And for the for say for example, I'll say that like the 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 Democratic Party says it disenfranchises people without an ID. Okay, mm -hmm. I in this day I cannot comprehend why people wouldn't have an ID. 
You have to do everything with an ID. You can't travel mm -hmm. on a plane. You can't. Okay. So I, if I understand right, the uh, the excuse that people are giving that these IDs aren't even necessary and because it's uh, these folks are being disenfranchised, it doesn't hold up in your view. No. It's, it's not a valid argument no. for their position. No. Okay. Uh, what argument would convince you that their concern was justified? About having an ID or disenfranchising? Yes, uh, for their, their claim that they're there's a demographic of folks who are being disenfranchised. Well, the reason I, I say that everything that you do nowadays requires you had to have a, uh, a an ID. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, like I say, you can, a lot of places you can't ship a package. Oh, really? Without an ID. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, you like buying alcohol. Oh, so what I'm interested though is, let's say that there, if we were to have a representative of this group who's right. like the, the, they're the vanguard of this movement to make sure that IDs are not required when it comes to voting. Right. What argument could they give you? What justification could they give you that you would actually find compelling? Have you ever, have you ever thought I, about I've it? I've looked at it and they really just, that's what they say. They have not said, okay, I was, they haven't brought any kind of uh, an individual forward say I wasn't allowed to vote because I didn't have an ID okay awesome if they were able to produce an individual who were who was to demonstrate listen I went to this voting booth I'm an American I didn't have an ID because I don't have the ability to get down to the place and cover the five dollar fee I'm living you know paycheck to paycheck or I'm just scraping by if they were able to produce an individual like that would it cause you to soften a little bit on your view? No, because the state of Texas, you're allowed to get a free ID. Mm. Okay, there's no charge there. Okay, you know, if you are if you really want to vote, okay, to me, you're going to take a step to go to a place and get an ID. Okay, you, mm. you, if, you have a, if you have a bank account, you have an ID. So if I understand right, even if this vanguard leader of this movement to make sure that people can still vote without IDs was to produce a person, if that if that person came forward and said, listen, I just can't do get down there, you wouldn't find that a valid excuse? I wouldn't because they, I, I don't believe that they, they, I believe that they should be able to take initiative to, to get the right document. Even them producing a person who could tell you that I just can't get down there, it wouldn't be adequate for you. So what would? I don't think there's anything because, like I say, mm. uh, people should be able to say, take the right steps in, in, in getting an ID. Okay. There's nothing that could. If you don't have that ID, okay, you sign an affidavit saying that you did you don't have an ID and you weren't able to go get one okay you sign an affidavit at the voting place yes oh okay uh, say that again now you can actually go to show up at the vote without an ID without an ID and then you just you a affirm you affirm that, that you haven't been able to get an ID and you do oh. not have one and you sign oh, okay. an affidavit and they will allow you to vote oh okay but hmm. however what happens is if you if they find out that you do have an ID okay mm. they can bring charges against you because you would be misrepresenting or lying right. uh, about your situation right so but okay so if a person couldn't get an ID showed up to vote and affirmed that uh, they just don't have an ID right. they would be legally allowed to vote correct and are you okay with that yeah I'm fine with that uh, hmm. But at the same time, with the reason I'm okay with that, mm -hmm. to me that that implies that they are going to uh, verify that that person doesn't have any kind of ID, like versus driver's license, uh, passport, or, or whatever means they have. So, would, you, would you mind repeating that last moment? I was I was kind of listening to them. I'm sorry. Well, to, I get distracted really I, I easily. Understand. To me, they're 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 going to by them uh, signing that document and them accepting it, I believe that they're gonna somehow validate, okay, that person did not have an ID. I see, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're hopeful that there's a process in place right. to make sure that the affirmation 
isn't breaking any laws and it's really a person who doesn't have an ID. Right. Okay. Why is voter ID so important then if there seems to be a process in place to make sure that these things can happen without an ID? One time, when, after my mother had passed away, mm. okay. Sorry to hear that. Uh, she received, or I received a call about her voting. Mm. And I said, I asked them who they were, and they said they were some kind of political poll. They they were they were inquiring. Okay. How many years after her death? The same. She had been done. Let's say it was uh, two months. Two months after your mom died, you ended up getting a phone call about her voting. Ah. Uh, and did you think it was sort of a fishing expedition, or were they interested in sort of uh, getting to the bottom of a potential crime or something? No, I I I thought they were just trying to inquire what her political stance was, and. Uh, and and so I explained to them, well, she's not here at the moment. She had been dead. Mm -hmm. I can say you don't want you don't want to give too much away, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 I didn't. And so and I had a friend who was from Chicago, and he was ta telling me how what they do uh, when he was there. They would actually go to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Is what he was saying. He said part of their job was to go to the cemetery and see which people had died recently. Okay, and then they could actually there, okay, register. Uh, they could not register, but they could actually vote in their name for that uh, year. Okay. Okay. Uh, so folks were actually going and getting names in order to be uh, to vote illegally. Yeah, vote illegally. Okay, gotcha. And I, and I said, are you sure? He said, yeah. He said, I was paid to do that. <laughs> huh. And so I, and he said, but you can only do it in that current cycle. If they were dead two years, naturally you couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, uh, those people, it's the, the voter registration card got sent astray. In fact, in fact, they would check the records by then, the people who were dead. Okay, so there was a check and balance. There are checks and balance in place to, mit to mitigate that, but there might be a small window of opportunity. Right. Yeah. And he said that was it. Uh -huh. Just that first year, or first period of time. Mm. If a government official who is involved in this activity, right, they've spent the last 40 years working to tighten the voting process and to make sure things don't slip through the tracks, and they were able to assure you that they've closed that loophole, that it might happen one out of a, a million times where somebody might squeeze through and, and get a vote, do you think that that would lower your stance or soften your stance on, on your dedication to making sure that there was a voter ID? Not really. I because how you, you can't really say a lot of times you can't find that a person has voted fraudulently without what I'm saying is voted in another person's name there's really a lot of there's there's not that much opportunity to find out that the crime has been committed and they go there and they they, they vote huh. okay they say okay I'm I'm Jane Smith mm -hmm. okay I'm voting and if they don't furnish an ID, if they don't furnish an ID or some kind of identification, then that person's vote's gonna be registered. If there's no way to detect that a crime is being committed, how do you know that a crime is really being committed? Well, again, I can only, my experience with, with my mother, and then with oh. I was, Okay, so that was a pretty influential phone call that you right. got, and then sub subsequent conversation with your friend. Right. If you hadn't received that phone call, let's say you're watching the TV and you just let it go to voicemail and they hung up, and it never happened, and then you never had your subsequent conversation with your buddy, would you be so resolute on your position? Probably not, because they wouldn't have had that much knowledge, or I wouldn't have even mm. have thought mm. that you could have committed fraud. So that was a pretty influential phone call. Right. Let's say your buddy calls you up and says, Keith, dude, <laughs> remember that call we had uh, like that, that year your mom died and you got that phone call? I've actually been doing some research and this really isn't as big of an issue as you, that I led you to believe. Yeah. What would you say to him? Well, I, you say big issue. I think one vote, okay, fraudulent vote is one too many. Okay. Mm. Uh, you want perfection during the voting well, process. I, I, I correct. I, I think every mm -hmm. vote should count. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you vote Democrat or Republican, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I, I just believe that 
there should be no fraudulent voters. That was a wonderful talk, sir. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Would you like a water? No, no, thank you. Okay. But thank you. Yes, sir. You take it easy. We'll see you around. I hope so. Bye bye. Hi. So, now that was a great, great talk. What a great guy. Uh, <laughs> And it was a fun it was a fun topic too. We were talking about voter identification and the fraud that he thinks is going on. It sounds like the the phone call that he got with, from his friend was was instrumental in in driving home his resolute fastness. <laughs> is that even a word? His resolute steadfastness, maybe, uh, to this position. Even if a person could come forward to explain that uh, that this fraud isn't really happening on a scale that you think that it is, he would still be tied to it. I have to say, this was quite an interesting talk. Uh, I got a real kick out of it. It's a topic that I've never covered before. I really like the, the way that that started too. But we had a good discussion and I feel like I really understand where he's coming from. And I'm optimistic that he's just walked away with a better understanding of where he stands on this particular issue. And maybe he is putting a little bit more weight on that one phone call than maybe he should. I don't know. We didn't raise our voices. I wasn't arguing with him. I wasn't telling him, hey, dude, you sound like a person who would have voted for that asshole, Trump. But no, it's, it's not necessary. Hey, how are you? You good? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to my camera. <laughs> it's going to be on TV. YouTube. Yeah, but how do I look it up? How do you look it up? Do you have a computer? Go to YouTube.com and type in my name. Anthony, Anthony, well, Anthony Magna Bosco. How am I going to do that? I could write it down for you. Okay, write it down. Because I think I tried before and I couldn't get it. Oh, really? Is it going to make me discouraged? That's hard to say. <laughs> it's not, you know. That's my last name. It's going to smear, so um, let it dry first. M A G N A B O S C O. You got it. Bye, I dear. Love you. <laughs> God's still waiting on you. Okay. Have a nice one. Every single time. All right. Well, what I was saying is that what was great about that talk is that it didn't get heated. I didn't say, hey, dude, you look like the kind of guy who would vote for Trump. And I'm progressive and you're in this category and let's duke it out. No. I asked him questions to figure out how he's so sure that what he thinks is true. And I think the big reveal there was that he's putting a lot of weight on that one phone call, on that discussion that he got from his friend. And I'm optimistic, honestly, that he might be thinking about that talk and his position on this topic more than he would have if I had argued with him and pulled out my phone and, and dug up statistics on the fraud rate of voting in the United States. I doubt he would find that compelling. He might. I don't know. But um, we can cross that bridge when we come to it. SE is so good about assessing where a person is on their belief. And I think that was just a wonderful illustration of it.